What is happening, Adventure Nation? We are leaving the Tall Chief Campground just outside of Seattle, Washington, but we're not done with Seattle just quite yet. This is the Motorhome Experiment. Yes, we are just outside of Seattle, Washington, but we're not quite done with Seattle yet. We are leaving the Tall Chief and we're gonna roll yes. over to a casino for one night, Boondock. Then we're gonna head to a state park and then she's leaving me. Yeah, I don't know about we. He's heading to a state park. Yeah. I'm leaving. <laughs> Lori's out of here. Just temporary though. It's like so don't worry about it. But this campground told Chief actually is very nice. Yeah. The pool area, it has a hot tub, it has a sauna. Uh, the lodge area is very nice too. We actually saw the Stanley Cup there uh, yeah, when we, we did. had a chance. And look at the spaces, like this specific one is just so large. Yeah, the site's about 65 feet long. It's pretty wide, lots of space. Uh, a little too much tree cover for our solar our do, to do any good, but we're plugged in but anyway, no, so it doesn't it's matter. Not for our solar, just to get some sun. It feels like it's dark all day long because yeah. of the trees. Yeah, so it makes us wake up even later than we normally do. Yes. But it, yeah, we, we didn't use the campground too much. We did use the spa a couple of nights. Uh, met a couple of nice folks there, Ian and Millie, who you saw with us touring in Seattle. And then uh, that's about it. We're now uh, rolling out, and uh, we'll see what all the trouble we can get into. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's go. Come on, y'all! Okay, we've got a slight problem as we pulled up here to the dump station I noticed that we don't have any brakes it's kind of important when you have an RV pulling the car and you weigh 25,000 pounds so I'm gonna pull over just up here and we're gonna have to check that out hmm, not good Ian how you doing buddy Ian out walking the dogs I've got my nifty light on here the brake fluid thing is up in here, the brake fluid reservoir. It is not in a good spot to try and get brake fluid in it. And it just looks like we're out of brake fluid. It is leaking a little bit up in there, but nothing that's too bad. I'm definitely gonna have to check that out. But for now, I just have to get brake fluid in there and this is gonna suck. So you guys can see that's the reservoir right there. He ain't shining the light on it. I've got to get a bottle up in there and uh, that bottle right there. So it's gonna be interesting, but I think we can do it. Okay, we finally got fluid in up front. It wasn't easy. Uh, we used a tiny little funnel from my wife's kitchen. So now that funnel is destroyed, by the way. You don't wanna use that for baking after you've used it for brake fluid. But we did find that we're having an issue down under here. You can see that the caliper is leaking. So I'm not gonna drive more than a, a few miles just to get down to where I can buy the part. While Lorena goes to El Paso, I'll fix that, get a rebuild kit in that caliper or replace the caliper, either or, and we'll be good to go. See, it's not all roses, folks. This too shall pass. Okay. So, we have a brake issue. So, first thing, first big thing, really, I mean, the throttle body was the first month in. That was a couple hundred bucks. We've been now on the road for 28,000 miles or something like that. And uh, not 20, just over 26, 26.6. And really no other major issues. Just maintenance. Maintenance, That's doing our oil changes and stuff. So that caliper is probably gonna be a couple hundred bucks or a rebuild kit if I can get that, it'll probably be, I don't know, 60, 80 bucks. Of course, those are 1980 prices that I remember. <laughs> so could be different, but it shouldn't be too, too hard of a problem to get fixed. And I'm gonna have time with the missus out of town. Yeah, but doesn't this happen in the worst time, like today's travel day, departure time, and it's when these things happen. Good morning, everybody. Today's kind of a sad day for me because uh, this one's heading to the airport. And it's not fair. Look at like, she looks so good when she's going to the airport. It's just not fair. 
so not every day, just when I go to the airport. Just when you go to the airport. I don't want her head to get too big, folks. You don't want to, you know, compliment her too much. We are at the Saltwater State Park just outside of Seattle. I'm going to be here for the next 10 days. Lori's heading down to spend some time with her folks, get some dental yeah, finished. Finish a dental yeah. thing that I have. I just want to show you this. This is one of those weird little sites where you're kind of just like a little semi-circle pull-off, but plenty of space. And I'm actually only here for four nights, and then I'm going over into that site there for the next four nights after that, or five nights, something like that. But right now we're heading off to the airport, get Lori on a plane. And you know it's dangerous, Lori, leaving me alone. You know what happens when you leave me alone. When, it's when he gets the idea. The whole full-time RVing, it was one time I was gone. Yeah, you went to Mexico and left me alone, and next thing you know, we're living in an RV. So it's dangerous. So maybe we'll have a boat when you get back. No. Airplane? Yeah, maybe. Oh, you'd be interested in that? Yeah. can't live in an airplane, though. We not... You can travel just completely. Yeah, so. All right, let's go. And Lori is off and running, so I'm on my own for the next 10 days and uh, let's see what trouble we can get into. Since Lorena left, I've been locked up here in the RV. I haven't been locked in the RV. I've actually done some work outside in the RV. I changed a brake caliper and did some other stuff, but for the most part, I've been in here editing, so I think it's time to get out and check out the campground. Just hope you can hear me over the airplanes. They are incessant. This is a pretty nice campground, other than the airplane noise, but it's right on the Puget Sound, so we're gonna go down near the water and show you guys around. This body of water right here is the Puget Sound. It runs between Seattle proper and some of the other little islands here. I know Bainbridge is one of them, but other than that, I don't know much about the area, other than the fact that it's beautiful. That was fun. Good morning, everybody. Lorena is still out of town, so that means I'm gonna go do guy stuff. And by the way, we moved sites. We're in a huge site now. We were right there in a little like semi-circle site, which, which wasn't bad, but now we're in this huge site, big open area. So they get we full sun on that solar all afternoon. That's good, but I'm gonna bring you guys with me. I don't know how much of this I'm going to be able to show you, but we'll see. Last night I was so happy because I got a video done early, got everything rendered and ready to roll, and then was just leaving now and realized that I forgot to upload it. And it's almost noon, but it's uploading now, and hopefully by the time I get to where I'm going, it will be finished. I didn't mean to forget you guys. I really didn't. I'm going in there. I think you guys have to stay out here, so I'll let you know what it's all about when I am get done. Okay, we're just in touring the Kenworth plant. Now we're out looking at trucks. This is one of the new, this is a T880? This is a, this is a T880 and thing looks like an aircraft inside. It doesn't really look like an aircraft, so don't send me emails, but you get what I'm saying. It's really cool. It even has that new truck smell. All right, the tour at Kenworth is done. That was really cool. That was really, really cool. And 
I want to thank Jim and Pamela Rogers for arranging that. Jim, can I say that? It's too late, it's on video. But Jim took me on the tour. It was awesome. I was like a little kid in a candy store. A huge candy store, but a little kid in a candy store. Heading back to the campground, but before I do, there's one place I'm gonna stop by and check out. Turn right onto Monroe Avenue Northeast. Got it. Okay, I am here at the Greenwood Memorial Park Cemetery and not big into visiting cemeteries, I'm really not, but I thought this was worth stopping by, paying tribute to Mr. Jimi Hendrix. The crazy thing about Jimi Hendrix is that his career was about four years long. It wasn't a very, very long career. At least the majority of his career was in about a four year period where you know, it was most influential and arguably one of the greatest musicians of, of all time. So very short career, but huge influence on rock music and especially some of the instrumentals that go along with rock music. The wah-wah pedal, if you guys don't know what that is, you'll have to look it up, but a lot of that stuff was because of Jimi Hendrix. He liked that raw, overdriven guitar and amplifier sound and whether you loved him or hated him and loved his music or hated his music, one of the most influential artists to ever live. So rest in peace, Jimi Hendrix. The grounds here at the Greenwood Memorial Park are spectacular. They're really beautifully kept. There is also a huge Asian influence here. So they have the Peace Garden that celebrates the Asian influence of the area. And that is really pretty cool as well. made it back to the campground. Campground is full right now. The entire park is full. It's just a beautiful Saturday afternoon here now. And the really cool thing is the aircraft are now coming in this way rather than taking off this way so it's not quite as noisy. That's a good thing. Right Ozzy? Good morning, everybody. Happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. And of course, it'll be long after Father's Day by the time you see this, so happy belated Father's Day. Lorena is still out of town, which means Polly gets to go do what Polly wants to do. Actually, Lori would want to do this too, but I'm gonna go meet some viewers for lunch and I'm gonna go check out a car museum in Tacoma that looks pretty cool online, so pretty excited about that. Yeah, I joke about being able to do this without Lorena, but in actual fact, Lorena is a car person. She's very knowledgeable about cars and likes them very much. She just doesn't like to do this kind of stuff all the time, and I could do this kind of stuff all the time. I don't know why I expected this thing to be a really small venue, but it's pretty crazy looking so far. And it's one of those days, Father's Day, so everybody's here, it's packed. So I guess with today being Father's Day, oh, by the way, yeah, uh, that's the Tacoma Dome, some kind of event center. Bob Seeger's about to play there, and they had uh, Justin Timberlake, a bunch of other people. They're gonna play there soon, but pretty cool. But this place here, this is the LeMay Car Museum, and 
not at all what I expected. I expected this tiny little place and that looks insane. So we're gonna meet our friends and head on inside. I had one of those when I was younger. That brings back a lot of memories. All right, gang, I have my buddy Ted Denman with me. Ted is the guy that gave me the blue bug sponge, so whenever I have a clean windshield, you can thank him. I appreciate that too, because my windshield is huge. <laughs> Ted is from Ohio. He happened to be out here in Washington. We're both car guys, so we thought we'd meet here at the museum and check it out. We're gonna bring you guys along with us. This place is crazy. It, this, I did not expect it. It's amazing. They have so much cool stuff in here. This is a Stanley Steamer. I've never heard of it. Of course, there's a lot of cars I haven't heard of. This is a Hupmobile. Never heard of that before. This thing runs on steam. How cool is that? What's really cool about a lot of these cars is they actually still run. This particular car here is an old LaSalle, which used to be a sub, uh, sub design or a sub brand of Cadillac. This one as recent as 2011 was on a tour through Italy. So that's kind of cool. Lorena, I just found our new toad. Check it out. That is awesome. Put those front two wheels up on the dolly, the back one just trails. That's amazing. I like it. This is a 1961 Dodge Dart. Absolutely beautiful car. This is the new Dodge Dart. What the heck happened? This thing here is a 1960 Rambler with a Ferrari engine in it. That is crazy. It is absolutely beautiful. Okay, if your house is on fire, this is the kind of fire truck you want to show up. Probably not so much this one, but that's pretty cool. 1958 BMW. You open it, open it from the front. Pretty cool. Oh yeah, I had one viewer tell me that I was too old to say cool, so we're gonna try something else today. Look at that thing, it's fabulous. That is wonderful. Isn't that neato? Fabulous, stupendous, neat. All right, I don't care what. How cool is that? That is amazing. 
loving Father's Day here. This is amazing. And this one was actually used in the movie Flintstones in 1994 with John Goodman and Rosie O'Donnell. Very cool. George Barris was the man when it came to movie cars. Yabba dabba do. Oh my god, that thing is beautiful. This car is an Allard. Never heard of that one before. This one's a 1968 Oldsmobile. Never heard of that one before. This Corvette is simple gray, but the paint on it is just insane. It is so good. That's when Corvettes were really cool and not so much anymore. Actually, the new Corvettes are pretty neat. Okay, there's always certain cars that deserve added attention. This is a Studebaker Avanti. This is number one. The number one production Studebaker Avanti on the planet. This was it before it got restored. Somebody had put flames on it and other stupid little things. It's now restored, but it was the number one production car for Studebaker. That is incredible. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Again, another kind of unique car. Very weird looking, we almost walked by it. This was made by the Granite High School here in Washington, and it was done in 2011. But if you read this here, they went to a competition in Detroit, which was all about uh, fuel efficiency and stuff. This thing achieved 186 miles per gallon. It can be done. We're just getting screwed by the oil companies and the car companies, so, so annoying. And that's pretty incredible. Oh, and by the way, I want to mention, this was done by a shop full of females. So, kudos to them. That's amazing. And Kevin, this one's for you, brother. Time to go back to the future. The LeMay Car Museum here in Tacoma, Washington. Oh, two thumbs up, even though I only have one, but I've got the other thumb up, it's just on the camera. But two thumbs up, amazing place. Really a cool museum. A lot more than what I expected. Now we're off to do some lunch. Check out downtown Tacoma. And I'm already getting that fishy smell off of the bay. All right, we are done at Indochine Asian restaurant. It was really good. The restaurant was fantastic inside. Really pretty place, so that was awesome. And uh, now we're just gonna take a little walk around downtown Tacoma here. I don't know if this is downtown Tacoma, actually. Could I don't be. know where we are. I know we're near Tacoma, Washington near somewhere. Station. And we're near the train station, and we're near the, uh, yes, Union Station is right here. That place looks cool.
popped over here to the harbor and wanted to check out the museum at last, but it is closed. But it's beautiful here in Tacoma, this little harbor. And they are rocking out over there. Alrighty, folks, we are back. We? I guess it's me. I'm used to saying we because Lori's normally here, but she's not here right now. No need to have a sad face. We had an amazing time. Again, we. Well, we today in Tacoma, it was Ted and I, and then Leanne joined us for, for lunch, but great time in Tacoma. The LeMay Car Museum was awesome. Totally unexpected, so I, I love that. And then in my little drive around Tacoma after was pretty cool. The drive back along the Puget Sound was really amazing. Some of it was a little industrial at first, but then it got really, really cool at the end, but... It's Father's Day, so I'm kicking back. I'm not working at all this afternoon, but I am going to watch a video, and the video I'm going to watch is about color grading, which is about how to make the videos look better, which is weird because that's kind of like work, but not really. But anyways, this is where we're going to end this one. So if this is your first time here, we would love you to hang out with us, get to know us a little bit more, and that means you got to hit that subscribe button. It would be super cool if you like the video. It helps. It matters. I'm not sure what it does, but it makes us feel better, and it'll make you feel better about yourself. So, thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon. Bye now. The grounds here at the Greenwood Memorial, 